Good morning. Um, it's our dream, actually, to try to create a sustainable city. At the very beginning, we were talking about um, livable city. We we're talking about carbon reductions of low carbon city, and then we we're talking about sustainable city, make everything sustainable. Um, and this is this is our dream, actually. Um, and we try to do a lot of things. Of course, we we are facing some challenges and uh, problems and issues. Of course. And the most important thing is that you need to get the momentum from citizens' participation, and that that's the key. Um, in Taiwan, uh, we believe there's a culture. Um, it's like to cease to believe. Um, unless we see something solid happen, uh, we're not going to believe you. We're not going to buy you because you're politics. You know, we don't trust politics. That's, that's what's happening in Taiwan. This uh, this idea, this concept. Um, so when you are talking about um, sustainable city, you definitely face, face some issues and the problems and challenges. And it's our dream and potential. We want to create actually a clean city. And we have a main river here. Uh, water is a precious resource. We want to use that resource uh, effectively and efficiently. Then you know there's a carbon effort, a reduction effort, of course. Then the goal is to create a sustainable city. Um, you know, the definition of sustainability, of course, people have different um, definition about sustainability. Uh, basically, uh, habitable environments, and then sustainable economic development, and appropriate use of resources more than just reduce, reuse, and recycle. I mean, appropriate usage of resources. When you say um, how to obtain a sustainable city, you're talking about clean air, clean water, uh, clean environment, uh, eco-friendly buildings, they talk about green buildings of course, organic farming, biodiversity, healthy and livable city, eco-friendly transportation, uh, so-called green transportation, uh, renewable energy, recycling and reuse. See, this is the river bank. Um, bear in mind, this picture because our riverbank was piled with the garbage before. It was seriously polluted. Um, unfortunately, we need to spend a lot of money trying to clean the garbage out of the riverbank. Also, we, we build man-made wetland. Help us to clean our sewage water. And it's been proven effective, very effective. Also, we invite those uh, you know, birds and fish uh, to come back to this habitat. It's proven very, very successful. I'll show you some numbers and uh, species uh, later. It's a healthy and clean city for the children and for everyone. This is our river bank. Clean water, you can see boats, you can see people riding bicycles along the river bank. It's a very, very nice and clean place. So people can go outdoor to do exercise. So people don't have to stay in the house watching television and uh, you know eating uh, some uh, snacks, gaining weights. They can go outdoor to exercise. Um, and uh, people love to do outdoor exercise more and more now. You can see the vehicles um, there. You're talking about electric cycles, bicycles, electric vans, hybrid cars and the MRT or subway system. This is what we call the green vehicle. Okay. In Taipei County alone, we have around 3.1 million vehicles, but we only have 3.9 million residents. Okay. We have more than 2.2 uh, motorcycles in this area. So what we plan to do is to introduce green public transit system. If people use the screen public transit system more, they don't need to drive that much. They can drive less, or they don't have to drive at all. If we build this uh, green public transit system here, and it, it, it's what we're doing now, actually. We're going to have some electric buses um, serve the public uh, in December, this December. And there's our solar um, renewable energy. 
garbage reduction. Garbage is always a problem to every metro area, especially in Taipei City and Taipei County, because we have too many residents. So we need to reduce garbage. Um, what we, we did was like, um, the first stage was try to separate garbage into three categories. Uh, recyclable and uh, food leftover, or the garbage has to be sent to the incinerators to be burned to generate electricity, of course, at the same time. And we were uh, uh, introducing this new policy on the second stage, that is pay as you throw. And in the past four years, we reduced the garbage by 50%. 50%. Okay. It's very difficult because people need to participate. People need to believe in this policy. People need to build up this, this idea and the belief and actually change their lifestyle. They trend, change not to you know, create that much garbage daily. It's like changing their habits. It's very, very difficult at the very beginning, but it's very successful now. Um, you know, in Taiwan, we have 25 cities and counties. Only the city of Taipei and the county of Taipei are implementing this policy. And these two cities and counties are the only two constituencies reduce garbage significantly. Okay, and these are the problems we're, we're facing. Um, I've mentioned, and see the, the pollution. Around 25 of Thai, total Taiwan factories are registered or locations in Taipei County. They're talking about one quarter of the total factories in Taiwan. Uh, so this is a big number. So actually, we form a task force. We go to those factories, help them to have cleaner production. That means you, you use less, less input and generate less output, including carbon dioxide or some kind of waste. It's like an integrated approach. You can actually just do one, take one activity, uh, action, one action alone. You must do uh, everything in every aspect at the same time. So people see results, uh, positive consequences that people believe in uh, that. You see the volunteers, how many volunteers we have in this county? 100,000 volunteers participate. They're volunteers, we don't pay them for doing this. But they believe in this, so they want to join us. And even for patrolling the river, we have 762 volunteers. They patrol the river 24 hours. See what happened before and after? One interesting uh, thing is that um, after we clean this corner, people stop littering in this area. See, this is what happened. That's Katie. Okay. And this is the waterfront. That's what we're going to do. Um, okay. This is what, like, what I call a, a, a platform, a stage. So all kinds of activity happen on the stage and the platform. So what's happening here? We try to clean water. You know, by natural force, you want to. You have this uh, 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 factories to try to clean sewage too, but this is the old-fashioned way. And people try to, people try to learn something and try to see, you know, what we can do to clean uh, the, the water, the sewage we generate. Okay, this is what we've been done. You know, in before I inaugurated, people tried to build up this sewage grid system. But it's, it was only like 7.2%. Now it's reaching around 35, 36%. So in the city alone, you don't smell, you know, and and, 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 and less mosquitoes. It's it's a good uh, a sanitary system to try to build. So we, so as to collect the sewage, it's not these interceptors actually. Collectors try to collect uh, sewage, you know, before. The sewage is just being expelled into the, the river directly. So the river was seriously polluted. 
Now we, we're collect, collecting all the sewage along the river, river bank. Then use man-made wetland and, and that, that gravel contact oxidization process sites to cleanse the water by natural force. Here are the, uh, the wetland along the river bank. So after we collect the sewage along the river bank, let it flow into the man-made wetland or that gravel oxidization sites. So after we clean the, the water, the water sewage, the sewage, clean the sewage can just flow into the river. We even use helicopters to patrol the river. So we can monitor if there is any uh, pollutants flow into the river. See, these are the illegal uh, gravel pits. Uh, these are 300 illegal factories built along the river bank. See the color of the river? It's in yellow. And chemicals, and mud, and sands expelled to the river directly. And this is a different picture. I hope this is going to work better. Okay. See the, the color of the river? The water? Light blue. It's beautiful. They would be the park after we removed all those factories. You're talking about 300 factories. Our past government dare not to touch them. But we did it. We removed those factories and we built a park. It's a very famous park in Taiwan now. And see this side of fish. It disappeared for 20 years. But after we cleaned the river, this fish returned. So they've been disappeared for 20 years. That's what we call biodiversity and healthy water system. See the species? In 83 till uh, 2007, the number of species increased. And finally, so birds increased. In 2016 to 26, species 23 to 57 species. You see all these birds, all this fish came back after we cleaned the river. Well, in the, in the past four years, we've won the, uh, um, the efforts um, on cleaning the river, the best performance among 25 cities and counties in Taiwan for four consecutive years, four times. And the cleanest city for three consecutive years. See, bike, bike lands. 300 uh, kilometers completed, but in the next year, we're going to complete 500 kilometers in total. Guess what? If we can you know, introduce green public transit system, we're talking about 100% green, uh, and the people drive less, guess what's going to happen? We have more space for bicycles, pedestrian, and everything. And uh, the air will be much cleaner, uh, we can uh, actually uh, save the people's uh, money uh, if they take more uh, public transit system. And this is the system we're, we're introducing now. Okay, we're using solar panels. Well, incinerators, of course, try to burn garbage and generate electricity at the same time. There's a bus station using solar panels. Uh, this house using solar panels. And this, this was a garbage dump. But we use the gas generated by the, gas, uh, by the garbage to generate electricity. And uh, on the pile, we try to uh, you know, plant more trees, uh, form a tree bank in this area. Also, we introduce uh, uh, you know, tourism, in invite tourists to go inside this area to learn how to reduce carbon emission and what kind of technology or product uh, they can use. OK, these are the recycled bicycles, computers, uh, fans and everything, and we have stations. After we fix this recycled, you know, um, bicycles and everything, uh, even computer and bed and everything table, uh, we just give it away to those people who need this but cannot afford. Uh, we, we have these uh, stations, um, you know, introduced to, to the community. Okay. This is the, um, another education example we try to introduce uh, in one uh, cleanest township in Taiwan. It, it's, it's named Pinglin. 
only electric vehicles can be used in this area. And we encourage tourists to go there and calculate their footprints. And we are working with some shops and the restaurants. Every one dollar from ten dollars, every penny. Every one dollar from every ten dollars they spend in these restaurants or shops will be allocated to plant trees. You know, shops and restaurants are willing to work with us because they show their you know commitment to reduce carbon emission. So you're talking about shops, you're talking about residents, farmers in this area because we want to eat local, in season, vegetables and food in this area, and they commit their committed to creates a very clean environment. They're working with us, so we're introducing all kinds of skills, technology into this small township. And guess what's happening now? Around four years ago, they lost their tourists, they lost their business. On average, around 4,000 tourists go visit this township. It was a drop, big drop from 23,000 tourists per month to 4,000. After we introduce this low carbon tourism into this area, the number of tourists increased to 28,000 per month now. This is the wetland tourism. We invite like people to visit wetland so they understand what wetland can help us to clean sewage and see the biodiversity, eco-diversity in this area. This is the car we use in that area. See how beautiful it is? Remember, it was a garbage dump. It was a garbage dump. See here? Green architecture, green transportation, green energy, recycling resources, sustainable, sustainable living environments. These are the five key categories. Thank you. The first to act 